welcome to the Sometime Organist, an idea we had based on the fact that we get contacted all the time by email and various other ways with comments about how to play the pipe organ and also how to get local organs used. A lot of the information I'm going to give you today, the basics have always been covered in how to play the pipe organ, the two books I created online with videos, the links are underneath this video today, so go and look at those if you've got some questions about certain things, but in this one today I just wanted to cover the basics of how to get involved in playing the pipe organ. If you've got a little bit of keyboard skill, you can transfer it to the organ quite simply. And the main idea was that a lot of people have pipe organs in village churches all over the world, hundreds and thousands of them really, and they're not being used, they're not being maintained, and sometimes they're being got rid of, which is really sad, and that's often because no one's playing it. And they're not going to get maintained if no one's playing it, because they cost quite a lot of money to restore, etc. And so unless you play it, no one's going to restore it. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation really. So to make it fair and to demonstrate this, I've come to an authentic village church organ. This organ has been here well over a hundred years. It's had very little maintenance. A lot of the pedal stops don't actually work as we'll show you as we go through and there's all sorts of faults and things wrong with it but it's a nice beautiful instrument authentic to a village church and gives the right sound and if you can get people to hear these instruments and share them with people then people would want to restore them and look after them and enjoy hearing real live music so do you think you can do it Good, let's give it a go then. I'm going to start by giving you some pieces. I've got this book all together which I've created and um, you'll be able to buy the book from my website of all the music. But I'm going to play you through every single piece with thoughts on how to get around this instrument as if I've come to it just to play for a village church service. I've called it a sometime organist because you might only be a sometime organist. You might sometimes play for a wedding, sometimes for a funeral, sometimes for a church service. You get the idea. And the organ might only be used sometimes as well. So it'll have things wrong with it. So I've given you pieces which you can use for all those occasions and cover every eventuality as a learning amateur organist. And the first thing that people always ask when they see an instrument very much like this is, what does it all do? It looks a bit like uh, going to fly an aeroplane in many ways, people often say. And if you're not sure, pull things out, push things, try them and see what happens. The same advice is not advised when you're actually flying an aeroplane, I think. But we're going to give that a go now. Let's start with the stops. This is a two manual organ. They're very self-explanatory a lot of the time. There's a sign here, swell organ, which is the top manual on this instrument, and great organ, which is the bottom manual. If you're not sure, play some chords pull a stop out. Great organ, this must be the great organ, very simple. And we go through the different sounds. We've got a small instrument here, but there's three basic organ sounds you will come across. Firstly, a flute sound, quite a round sound, a, a gamba sound or solitional, which is a bit thinner. Yeah. Uh, and the diapason sound, which is usually the front pipes of the organ, the main organ sound should always be a bit louder and what you want to do is combine them together so I'm going to start with uh, Dime Be the Glory See the Conquering Hero by Handel which is a hymn and it's also a good piece of music to include as maybe a voluntary as well very simple arrangement chords in the left hand melody in the right hand and a very very simple pedal part where you can uh, sit and have your feet ready over the notes most of the time so we'll use just the great organ you might only have a one manual organ and so it's perfectly possible to play this on one manual so let's start with the grape. We need something quite loud. So the diapason sound is a good starting point. And then we have different pitches. So they're all at eight foot pitch, which is the same as playing notes on a piano. We then get four foot pitch, which is an octave higher. So eight foot pitch, same notes, but four foot, octave higher. And then we also have a two foot, which is another octave higher. So always have an eight foot pitch on for what you're playing. So begin with an eight, diapason. You can then add the four. And add a two if you want. Which brightens it up. I'm just gonna use eight and four for now, which is nice. Um, with the open diapason, you might find it slow at the bottom. So you might want to add something, a flute or a gamba maybe. That's a flute with it. That's a gamba. I'll use the gamba with the principal four and the fifteenth. Bit bright. I think we'll use eight and four. 
that's nice. And then for the pedal, we have a coupler down to the pedal. We have a grate to pedal, which means that at the moment there's no sounds. If we had grate to pedal, it plays the grate on the pedal by mechanically coupling it down. It's a mechanical instrument, this, so it uh, all happens mechanically. And then we've got a pedal board on 16, which should play the octave lower on the pedal, but it's a bit variable here. Most of the notes are actually missing, as I said. This is what we're dealing with if I've turned up to play for a real church service. So we've got open diapason, gamba, a principal, um, should we have the 15th? No, we'll leave that for now. And we've got couplers to pedal and the board on. Let's give it a go. There you go, so that's a very simple sound uh, we can use for playing the organ. That was quite nice, actually. I'm going to use something a bit quieter now, I think. Always remember, on an organ, when you finish playing, put the stops back in. You can't accidentally drop your hymn book then onto the keys and look silly during a church service. With a mechanical instrument, it's always worth remembering as well to push them in and pull them out fully. For example, because it's mechanical, everything is actually physically attached. And so as I'm pulling the stop out, if you don't pull them out all the way, you can end up with half, half stops, which is never a good idea. Um, we're going to move on to a little piece uh, by Bach now, and I'm going to use the second manual for this just to show you the different sounds. We're going to go on to the swell organ. It's called a swell because it's in a swell box. It's got shutters on the front, which you can open and close with a pedal, but we'll get to that in a little while. We'll leave that open for now. Um, and when we go through the sounds again on this manual, again, similar to the grate, but more muted and subdued, really, you have a flute sound. Then we have a solitional, a gamba type sound, a thinner sound, and then we have an open diapason. We also have a four foot flute, which is an octave higher. It's quite a nice sound. Uh, and then, so what you could do is we could maybe combine the flute and the same sounds match quite well. So on this instrument, because we've got two flutes, eight foot flute, four foot flute, we could use them both together to create a nice sound. And you'll notice that when I'm choosing sounds, I'm constantly playing and trying them out and using my ears to see if I like what I hear. You might find out to tune notes, notes that don't work, and you might change your stop suggestions based on that. Again, let's couple it through to the pedal. We've got a variable 16 foot, so we need something on the pedal, so you definitely want the pedal coupler, so we have swell to pedal, and you'll see... It all couples through straight to the pedal. Um, this is all again on one manual, and you'll notice with a lot of the pieces that I've arranged, they're very, very simple, uh, but they can be practiced, most of them, on the piano, because a lot of them are arranged for one manual. Um, if there's ones for two manuals and the hands crossed, just play with the right hand one octave higher on the piano, and you can practice that way at home without the pedals. But these, one manual, and you have a one manual organ, these will work perfectly well. Um, the other thing to notice is on the organ, your articulation, it's not like a piano. The initial playing doesn't affect the sound. So once you put a note down, it's when you let go is more important. So it's how you join notes together. So a piece like this will do it legato, so every note is joined together.
There we go. You can get some nice sounds out of a real pipe organ, and you'll notice the sounds are all affected by how you play. Unlike an electronic instrument, every pipe, as you play, is pulled by the next note. That's why when you're choosing registrations, you always need to play lots of different notes to try them out. Nice pieces, and uh, you don't need a huge instrument, just nice sounds, well played. And as you'll notice, there's mechanical noise as I play the pedal. So if you're playing a mechanical instrument, it's important and it's good for your technique if you can avoid mechanical noise. And one of the ways to notice this, if I try playing that last piece again with no stops drawn, but you don't want to hear, we don't want any of that noise. So the gentler you play and the nicer the sound will be as it lets air into the pipe. Um, let's move on to something slightly possibly more funereal, maybe. You're gonna to have to play for lots of different occasions as an organist. Um, we're gonna do a Chopin prelude. So if you're a pianist, you'll probably know this piece. And again, it shows the difference of playing on a piano and an organ. Now you don't have a sustained pedal on an organ. So in this piece, which you'll probably know if I give you as a... Very famous piano piece, and it's a very piano left hand with this repeated. So what you want to do is make sure it's not played like a piano short with a pedal. You want to play it held. So it's when you release, try and play again quickly to minimise the sound and delay of sound between each note so there's not too much gap. If you've got a big acoustic, easier. But if you're playing a small village church organ, you're probably going to have quite a dry acoustic. Right, let's have a look what we're going to do with this. Again, you can play this on one manual if you want, but what we want is a solo sound in the right hand. The flute sound... It's a bit too gentle, I think. The open diapason... is a bit too big, maybe. So if we take the... The flute sound, eight foot, and the gamba. Flutes and gambas combine very well together. And as a compliment, you can do the same on the swell. The flute sound, it's a bit too, it's not, it's not got quite the edge we want really. So if you have the solitional, which is a gamba type stop again, it just gives that little stringy edge to it. The open diapason, a little too heavy maybe. Again, pedal, we've not got many 16-foot notes, but we want the grate to stay separate on this piece. So we'll have a couple of the swell accompaniment to the pedal. It's only a, a sparse pedal part in this, which is fairly optional, really, apart from the last few notes, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Also, you could couple the manuals together, swell to grate. So the swell plays on here, it warms it slightly, gives a bit more swell. Um, that's quite a nice sound, I think. So in this one, you want a very legato right hand, a nice accompaniment in the left hand. And the thing to watch is, as you play, your left hand may affect the winding. With a real pipe organ, you'll hear it very well. If you play a high note, then play a low note, it wobbles because the big notes are taking all the air from the top. So as you play, you don't want to be too aggressive or you'll make the melody wobble quite a lot. So always listen out for that as well. It's always important, especially organs which aren't in great condition. The winding might not be the best. Um, I hope that's a good suggestion for that. Let's give this one a go.
There we go, very effective on an instrument like this, but very, very simple, not a lot of complicated things, and so you can really concentrate on what to do with your hands and possibly your feet. If you wanted to just include the last couple of notes on the pedal on that one, you could do as well. Uh, and I've got to say that in all the music that you get in the book, um, I've included all the fingerings and pedalings as well, and also some various uh, ideas for suggestions uh, for registration as well. But we're basing it on something very, very simple now. Now, you don't always have to use the swell, which is the quieter manual, for the accompaniment. And there's one other organ sound, which all organs will have, um, which we've not covered as well, and that's the reed sounds. Now, this is a very small organ. There's only a, a few stops on it, so it doesn't have any big trumpets um, and things like that, sort of big trumpets, imitative stops, but it does have a little oboe. And you'll notice with things like this, this organ is rarely used now, and it's not been tuned for quite a long time. So the oboes and things like that will tend to go out of tune rather than the usual pipe organ stops. I think we'll try it for this next piece, a very, very famous melody. It's not too bad. You can try it with another stop on the grate at the same notes if you want. And yeah, as you can see, it's passable, I think, as an oboe solo. So in this case, let's use the oboe on the top manual as a solo sound, and we use an accompaniment on the grate. So the softest sound we have on the grate is the flute, so we can use that. We'll use the 16 on the pedal, even though there's no C there. Uh, and then we'll use grate to pedal as well, to fill in the gaps. That'd be nice, I think. And you could, we have a swell box here, which affects the sound. So if I play the swell and close the box, it's quite gentle. So you can use this to give expression, or just to balance sound. So at the beginning of this, if the box is shut, too quiet, if I open it. So I'm actually just gonna leave it open because it's not loud enough otherwise for this to work. I think that's quite a nice sound. And we'll change manuals part way through, I think. Remember, very legato. So when you're playing chords in the left hand, when you change to the next one, we don't want to hear we don't want gaps, we need to change, almost overlapping, it's so legato. Cipher. If you ever get a cipher like that and a note plays for no apparent reason, keep playing it, it'll go away, hopefully. I suddenly decided part way through that, that I would change the sound. On this organ, you might have various sounds where you can press a button and change things, various systems. And if you look through the How to Play the Pipe Organ book two, I give advice on how to set divisionals and buttons. On an organ like this, these are factory settings from the Victorian times. We have no way of changing these. They've been done properly. So I've got set buttons here down, the, and there are levers on this organ. So I have to press the lever and stops come out. So I'm this one, 
and they're preset. They're not always useful because they might not have the sounds that you want, but I can suddenly change a sound like I did just then near the end of the piece to give myself a different sound on the swell. The important thing to note with these lever type things is do them in a positive way. You can do it whilst holding a card. The trouble is if you do it slowly, you can hear the stops come on and the wind come into them. So you can do them positively or between notes. So that's the best way of doing them. It's a good handy thing to have really when you need a quick change, but you might not have them. Okay, we're gonna go on to a trumpet tune by Henry Purcell. Now, again, push the stops back in. Um, I need to mention at this point as well, when you're playing with your feet, at first when you start, you don't need any specific shoes as such. You should wear shoes though. Um, an organ like this, you'll definitely end up with a splinter in your foot or very dirty feet possibly as well. And I wouldn't advise walking around. My basic advice is the same for anybody. If I'm leaving the house and walking to the shops, I wouldn't go out in my socks. So I don't play the organ in them either. It's the same advice really. You want something which will support your feet. So at first, just a normal pair of shoes, a thin leather sole, just wear them for playing the organ though so you don't dirty the pedals if you've got nice clean pedals. There are various uh, makes of actual organ shoes. I don't use them. I find the heels a bit too high uh, and sometimes they're a bit uncomfortable for me. You can also use dance shoes as well. People often use them. They often have a very suede sole which over time will polish out and become smooth. So these are all good options but basically a shoe which is quite soft, quite easy to move in and you can feel the pedals gently. And the other option was the very basic things. Try and keep your knees together and try and play with the inside the ball side of your foot. Um, most of the pieces I've got in this book are, are generally with toes for the basic ones. You can choose which pieces suit you the best. Um, but I've advanced them slightly as we go along, but they should be fairly self-explanatory. But as I said, the Playing the Pipe Organ book one and book two show you a lot of pedal technique tips as well. So you can go through those as well. For this trumpet tune, again, we can be on a one manual instrument for this very sort of famous piece. And we'll go back onto the grate for the bigger sounds. If you have a trumpet stop, you could use that on one hand and accompaniment on the other. That would be a good idea, but we don't here. We're too, we're too small a church here. So we'll start with the principal sound. Now, it's a nice principal sound. Can I warm it up with other stops? That's the flute. The gamber adds a bit more edge, so I'm going to use that. And then the principal four, that's it. And if we're going for a big voluntary, maybe the two foot as well. Again, 16 foot on the pedal, even though there's no Ds. Uh, and then great to pedal as well. Always trying your sounds. Yeah, that's quite a nice sound. You could couple the keyboards together. I think for now we'll just have the grate on its own to help the winding of the instrument and not make it struggle too much. And articulation wise, again, you don't want to be too short for this tune. But you don't want to be legato. It sounds like you're playing backwards in a way. So you've got to articulate every note with a little tiny gap. With a lot of these pieces, you can just play them twice or you can repeat each half. They're all laid out. I've made it clear in the book what you can repeat and what you can't. Um, you can stop partway through if you needed to at a cadence. Depends how long you need to be playing for during whatever you're playing for. But a lot of the time, things you will need are some quiet pieces. The organ in many ways fills in background noise. People talk in churches and for services. I mean, they want something in the background. They never want silence in particular. And I've got a very nice piece here by César Franck from a book of harmonium pieces. I've added a pedal part, quite a simple one. Um, but for this, on an organ like this, we want to use the very quiet sounds now. So up here, the solitional is the quietest sound we've got. 
On some organs you might have a tremulant which makes the sound wobble, which would be a nice effect maybe for this as well. Um, also you might have a string stop such as a celeste, which is tuned slightly either sharp or flat depending on the instrument to give a little wavering sound. But I think we can do a little cheat because we've got a mechanical organ. Um, because of the stops as I've shown, when you pull them out, it can sound out of tune we can actually flatten the stop slightly by not allowing as much wind and just warm the sound ever so slightly. It's difficult to do and you'll probably need to make a little pencil mark somewhere on it, but if I start with this, find the flute and push it back in a tiny... Can you hear the sound just change a little? It's wavering now. That's not bad. Then if I do the same with the open diapason and start to push it back in, Check all the notes. And just adjust it until you know where you want it to be. That's quite a nice sound really, I think. Um, then we can have the swell to the pedals as well. So we've got the, it coupled through. Put the 16 foot back on. We've got a 16 foot there, perfect. That's not a bad sound. And we'll prepare on the grate. The swell to grate. And then we'll have a little solo sound from the middle. Maybe the ga gambas mix with string sounds very well. So if you go for those sort of gambery, stringy sounds, these will work quite nicely. Hopefully there won't be any two out of two notes doing that, but we'll give this one a go. And what I did in that was I just gradually opened the swell box in the middle when only one foot was playing the pedals and then closed it again at the end. Now once you've got to a piece like this, it might be at the start of a service. And when you've finished, you don't want silence to say you're waiting for the bride to arrive. The bridal march you might want to be going to in a moment or something like that. So you could just move down a note without stopping playing into F which is the cadence into the bridal march, which starts on an F, maybe. And in the book, I've given you some cards. If you just play some cards, it's quite nice in the background. And while you're doing that, you can be adding sort of uh, stops for your next piece, really. You might need to turn the page and just get ready. You can make this last for quite a while, really. And I've done it so that in your book, you can always have a cadence at any time, really. We'll need to make sure we've got a great pedal on, a diapason, 8-4, that's good, that'll do. So 8-4 and principles are quite good for bridal chorus. This is quite good, you can kill a lot of time doing this during a service. And then you might want to add, I've given you some figurations, even on the same cards. A couple of cards is fine. Arpeggios. But then if I suddenly need to Oh, someone's now decided that the bride is here. Cadence. We're okay. We're good to go. All I need to do now is play.
probably won't need that much of it. I've given an optional cut in the middle because if you're playing an organ this size, you won't be playing in a church big enough to need any more of that piece. But you will need to play it. And once the wedding has started, you'll need some nice music. You'll need music beforehand, but also you'll need music for signing of the register and just general background pieces. So I've got three or four pieces here which I've arranged. Very, very simple. I've made everything as simple as possible so you can really concentrate on what you're doing. I've got, first of all, the theme from the Adagio from the Clarinet Concerto by Mozart. And again, you want, uh, you could have a nice solo sound, maybe the flute. We could have flutes on both manuals, really. We'll couple them together. It's a little out of tune in place, in places. That might be different on a different day with nice heating on. Um, and then you've got swell to pedal as well. We'll have the 16 foot and see if we can find any notes as we go. And that might be quite nice. If it sounds a bit out of tune. Yeah, if we had the solitional, that covers the tuning slightly, I think, it sounds like to me. This is the adagio then. That's nice. I added the great pedal part way through and swapped onto a different manual. But you want to be carrying on now. We've got lots of pieces in the same key for this in C major. And we can use similar sounds. Again, we'll just go to the flute. This is the romance theme from Eine kleine Nachtmusik. These are all edited versions, so you can repeat them twice and go around in circles if you want. Um, People like nice pieces like this in the background. And this is what I used to play when I first started playing the organ and taught myself. I used to play very famous pieces of music, but they sound nice on a nice instrument. This could actually be on one manual, actually. Jay, we'll do one manual. Let's do just the flute on the great. Great to pedal, 16 foot on the pedal, and a flute on here. And we'll just do one manual.
Thanks. Um, again, another piece, the Largo from the winter from the Four Seasons. Again, in the same key, but you never know how many of these pieces you'll need until the bride finally arrives sometimes, or they finish signing the register. Again, we'll give a bit more of a warmth to the sound. Flute on here with, with the solitional, I think. Now, what you could do with this one is, if you're looking for registration ideas, just because you have a principal sound, the principal might be a bit loud. The four foot principal, the octave higher, played an octave lower. Might usually be a little more gentle and nicely voiced in the lower register. So I'm going to play with the right hand one octave lower than written on this, uh, with the accompaniment here. That works well. Swell's a pedal we need. Oh, Swell's a pedal. <laughs> Not swell's a great. Pedal board on. Oh, we've got to see this time it's come back on. It's getting better because we're using it and that's what happens. Okay, so this is the Largo from winter from the Four Seasons. There we go. You hear the last note settled a little then, but if you've got a mechanical instrument, if you sometimes push a bit harder, the coupler might not be working properly and it'll pull it down that little bit further. In our last, I think of the selection of waiting for the bride and signing of the register section, I've got Eternal Source of Light Divine by Handel. Very beautiful piece of music, very simple, nice long chords in the left hand and a melody in the right hand. So this would need a two-manual instrument, really. You can add to the grate a little bit in the middle if you want and add grate to pedal as well. But we're keeping it very simple so you've got this idea of how to get into these pieces. We can use something a bit warmer, maybe use the swell box as well for the opening. That's quite nice. But we want to be able to hear the melody. Yeah, then we need the gamba and then we've added the flute. Swell to Great. So the melody is supported by the swell as well. The four foot flute's nice. We'll have the four foot flute as well and keep the box closed and gradually open as we go along. I think that would be nice.
You can actually crescendo from quite a small sound to big without adding any stops as such. All I did was take grate and pedal on and off as I moved manuals, but you could have not bothered doing that and it would have had quite a big sort of effect towards the end. So it's quite a nice way of using an instrument like this. Now, uh, you'll notice in these pieces I've missed out the trills as well. You can include trills or simplified versions if you want, but I've missed them out because I I'm trying to keep it as simple for the very, very basics for the first time you ever go and try and play these things on organs and give you a way that's possible of doing it. I think we've had too many, too many pretty pieces now. We need something slightly more sombre, maybe. So I'm going to move to a piece of Corelli, an adagio. Very beautiful piece of music in a minor key, probably not very suitable for a wedding. It's more funereal, really, or something Lenten, maybe. Um, I think in this one, again, we need an accompaniment in the left hand. So we'll keep our pedal 16 foot with any notes we get. And we'll have swell to pedal as well. Uh, and in the swell left hand, let's have a look. The flute's quite nice with the solitional. I think we could use that. No, I think we'll use just the flute and the solitional for a nice soft sound, really. In the right hand, we need a solo sound. Now, for this, I would probably have swell to great anyway. That's quite nice, but we could have something a bit different if you'd like. So what if we had the flute with the two foot? This is a gapped registration. So you've got a gap in the octaves, there's an eight and a two, so they're playing two octaves apart. And you could play the right hand down an octave then. That's 
quite a nice, interesting sound. I think we can use that just for a bit of difference. You can use uh, anything. You could use the four-foot principle down an octave. But I think for a change, we'll use that. It balances quite well, and I don't need to close the box then. interesting sound so do experiment and try different sounds and see what you like the sound of and what suits the instrument that you have there are no particular rules just the basics I've outlined so far I think we need something else maybe a bit more of an introductory funereal piece another piece of Chopin another prelude in C minor a very very famous piece of music um, a quite handy piece as well very pianistic so you probably know it and you can add a pedal which goes from left to right quite easily. Um, you could do it as a solo but you could do it on one manual. I think we'll, we will go with the principal sound on this. I think we can go for principal only but as I said it can be a bit slow at the bottom. So if you had the gamba yeah we'll do great only, great to pedal, 16 foot on the pedal. Yeah, and we'll just do a nice sort of solid sound with the big front pipes of the organ. Nice sharp piece which is suitable for lots of uh, occasions in a way. Let's have something slightly more jolly now, I think. Again, another trumpet tune by Purcell. As I said before, you could use a trumpet, we don't have one, so I'm going to use a, quite a big registration. We should open it up a little bit more and go for full organ maybe. Um, you can do this on one manual as well. So should we couple everything together? If we have... Start with the principle and see what it adds traditional the flute actually warms it up quite a bit and adds a bit of body to the sound four foot flute that adds a bit of sound 
Europe hopefully will get away with the oboe as well in this. Hopefully, hopefully, not too many out of tune notes. Swell to pedal as well. Then we're going to couple through swell to great. So when we're on the great, we have all the swell sound. And let's add to the great now. Principal. Do we need anything else with the gamba? We'll add the four foot principle. Yeah, we'll add the two foot, eight foot and two. And the four foot will add the, the bass really and help it move quicker. We've got the 16 foot on the pedal and great to pedal as well. And we'll do this on one manual. There we go, it's sounding quite good. And I've given optional repeats at the end. You can repeat the whole piece and even the last line to really bring it to a really big conclusion. Something gentler now, Apre Unrev by Faré. A very beautiful song, very pianistic in its accompaniment, but it gives you the chance to show the sounds of the instrument as a solo in the lower part and the higher part of maybe the great. So I think for a solo sound, probably. I think the gamba is too thin with the flute, it's a bit too gentle I think, so we'll go for, we'll go for the principal and it's in the middle and higher up so it's going to speak not too badly really, so we'll be okay there and we will couple through, so I'm going to have the 16 foot on the pedal with great to, oh, we won't have great to pedal, no, we'll have the 16 foot on the pedal only, um, we'll have swell to pedal for the accompaniment and the accompaniment is very pianistic again, like that Chopin earlier on, so you don't want to be re thin sound, we can warm it with the flute. Well, since we've got such a big principal sound, maybe we need... Do we need the flute? We don't need the solitiono. I think we'll just do stop, stop diapason and open diapason as the accompaniment to match the diapason on the grate a little bit and swell to pedal. Okay, and so we're going to use the swell as the accompaniment. I'm going to use the box a little bit to balance it. So if you want to try... start with it about there that sounds like the right balance just experiment obviously you can't do this during a church service or something but you'll know beforehand once you know your instrument what to do with it
a little more involved for you perhaps in that piece, but there's lots more techniques of using the swell box, using the pedals and the manuals all at the same time. So I've given you this book so that you can work through them and try different pieces that suit your ability. Some of them are very, very simple though, but if you're a good pianist already, you might want to play a piece like that and try and advance your pedal playing as well. But you don't need a lot of expression because the organ really does it for you if you choose the right registration. So I hope that's helpful for you. Now, we're back to our wedding season, I think, a little bit. So let's have a little larghetto by uh, Vivaldi, arranged by Bach, and then arranged and simplified by me. And for this one, it's another solo melody. Some chords at the beginning. It's also possible on one manual, this. So you could just use, um, say, a flute, a couple through to the pedal, with a 16 foot, if we're lucky. So we could start with this, and when the melody comes in, could use it like that but I think for this we're going to use two different manuals just for now again a left hand accompaniment we'll use a solutional and stop diapason we'll warm it up with the open diapason I think it'll take it on this couple through the swell to the grate and swell to the pedals we can put the swell through to those and now for the melody, there's various options with this you could play it down the octave again on a four foot principle I think we might try We'll try the gamber alone, I think. Just for a different sound, just for now. So you've tried all the different sounds of the instrument. Again, we'll have the 16 foot onto the pedal. We should find some notes every now and again, because we're in D major. And the idea with this piece is one of the elements you're going to have is you're going to go from one manual and move your another hand down to another manual. And when you do that, you don't need to have jumped with both hands. Take the last card with one hand giving you a full card time to move down to the next manual. You'll see what I mean when we do it now. I think it's time. I think the bride's probably nearly ready now. We'll hold one note. The wedding march is in C major. So if you move down to C, the idea with this is that we can go back to our cards now and fill in just while we're waiting. We might only have 10 seconds, 20 seconds, two minutes. You don't know if you've got enough time to play another piece, but you need to get your wedding march ready. Play some cards which you know work well. And nobody wants silence. You need to get your full organ ready on this. It's called noodling this, by the way, when you just, you can just do whatever you want, really. No one's really listening, therefore they're all chatting or being quiet or reflective. And again, if you just use harmony, melodies. And you 
make, up, make it easy so you can get a cadence. Then as soon as they're ready, I'm going to use my lever this time to put full swell on very quickly. I've included optional repeats in this and again if you're playing this size of organ in this size of church everybody will be outside by that point so you could carry on playing another piece in the same key or you could repeat a couple more times or just finish you'll be absolutely fine I hope these pieces have been helpful for you to see what you could do with an instrument like this as you can see I'm just dealing with what you'll have to deal with as I said at the very beginning, we want these instruments saved. They're hundreds of years old and they'll still be here in hundreds of years if we keep them. They need very little maintenance and people can learn them and play them and move on to big instruments. Uh, why would you play the organ in the first place? Go because you want to play it. Try and play it. Just go and ask at a church, can I play your instrument? Give it a go. I'm sure they'll be really glad of you to do it. And hopefully this has explained what to do with the instruments. As I've said, the links below the video are for there to find the music and uh, links to the how to play the pipe organ as well and where to get the sheet music I've played today. Also, give us your comments as well. Tell me what you'd like to include in future videos should we do this again. What was helpful? What wasn't helpful? I couldn't cover hymns completely today. That's a completely different chapter we'll have to do at another point. But the music side of it, even if you only play it for your own enjoyment and bring live music to people who might not otherwise hear it in their own church or place where there's a pipe organ. So I hope this really helped you today and so thank you so much for watching. I've enjoyed doing this as well. It's something very different. I'm usually playing huge instruments and it's great to see what we can do with a little instrument like this. And while we've got that registration on, I'm just going to play you one final piece which you'll find handy if you need to follow on, say, from that wedding march. This is the march from Scipio by Handel. <laughs>